Welcome to Dream by Design with Melissa Banks, where women share their dreams, struggles, and successes. How they were able to persevere despite the fear and create the life they want and deserve. If you're looking for inspiration to move you past where you normally would stop, then this is the show for you. Here's your host, Melissa Banks. Welcome to Dream by Design with Melissa Banks. I am so excited you could be with us today. I'm your host, Melissa Banks. We continue our Women Who Write series featuring some amazing women who share their journey and how they were able to keep going despite the circumstances. Our guest today is best-selling author, speaker, and home-based entrepreneur, Anissa C. Short. Hi, Anissa. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to speak with you. First of all, let me just say congratulations on all of your success. You have had a lot of success even during the pandemic, and I just want to congratulate you on that. I know you've been an entrepreneur for a really long time and doing quite well. So now a best-selling author, when did you know you wanted to be a published author? Oh, wow. That's an interesting question. So, um, I I jokingly say this, but it's very true. Um, I fell into becoming an author. It was not anything that I had dreams or aspirations for. It it evolved. So after moving to North Carolina, where I live now, I became very engaged in my community um, as an entrepreneur, as a community servant. And in the course of doing that, I became very um actively involved in participating with vendor events as well as facilitating vendor events, at which time a lot of businesses, well, several businesses in the area even asked that I partner with them in facilitating that portion of events that they hosted. And in the course of doing that, um, I met a lot of um, women in business, particularly those who have businesses from home, and realized that many of them did not know how to really represent in the marketplace. They were excellent at their craft. But when it came to to exhibiting, they were just kind of gun shy. And so I decided after numerous conversations and even phone calls and people reaching out to me for advice to write a book to serve as a resource for for those who fall into that category. And so in in the course of doing that, um, not really knowing, I figured I was just self-publishing. I I figured out is what I said. I became introduced to a local publisher who took me under her wing. She mentored me through the process of writing that book and opened up the whole literary process with me. And then she spoke into my life and said, this is not going to be your last book. And so that's how it started. That was in 2019. My first book was published in December of 2019. Since that time, I have um, participated in in an anthology project, which is a devotional for women. I have facilitated a devotion, uh, an anthology project, which is a, a book that serves to empower and encourage women. And um, and now I'm writing and hoping to have this next book launched in November. Wow. You know, when you were talking, I was thinking, and I, you may have heard me say this before because I often say it, that my heart didn't know to dream that. And I believe that God can dream for us bigger than we can dream for ourselves. So even though you weren't dreaming of, becoming an author. Actually, you hadn't thought about it, but the pieces had already been laid out for you to follow, so that meant your obedience was required. And I say that off you did. Well, you make a very... You were... Go ahead. No, I was going to say you're very, you're very, um, very much on point with that, Melissa, because here's what I knew. I knew that I was supposed to, I was destined to, or it was in my wheelhouse to serve as a consultant of of sorts or advocate for women in business. I didn't know how, but my books serve as, as that platform. They 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 um are another element to that to add to that platform. But I just had never thought about being an advocate from that perspective, if that makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. Because I've always been passionate about women and, and helping women pr- pursue their dreams and uh, encouragement to women. I just didn't know the platform that I would use as well. And that's how this show even started is um, Cyrus Webb uh, allowed me to co-host on a show that he had, and boom, this was here. But, you know, God had already put those things in plan for me. I just didn't know that that's where it would be. So that's why this platform is so important. And that's why we're here to motivate and encourage women. 
to go for their dreams. So I'm excited to have you. One of the things you mentioned briefly just then was your newest newest book that re- will be released recent soon, Seven Keys to Success, and how that book came about. Okay, so Melissa, here's the thing. This, but the content of this book was given to me over 10 years ago. Over 10 years ago, I was, um, I want to say maybe, I don't know how to describe the place I was in life, maybe like in a wilderness experience. I hadn't long left my great job. I made a decision to leave my employment with federal government to pursue entrepreneurship exclusively. And um, after doing that, we had some life challenges. I won't go into a lot of detail, but we suffered a lot of loss and a whole lot of other stressful, challenging periods. And so I just was in like a, am I doing the right thing? What in the world am I thought about? I quit this job. I mean, I'm, I'm loving my entrepreneurial journey, but really, you know, did I make the wrong move? You know how sometimes we may doubt ourselves or because of circumstances in life, we begin to do an assessment. And that's kind of, that's where I was. And so whenever I find myself in a slump, or not just when I'm in a slump, but just in life in general, I always pray. And I talk to uh, my creator. <laughs> and I, I need guidance. I need direction. And, and I get advice from others, which is always good. It's always great to have a mentor there to pour into you. But sometimes you just need to get by yourself and um, and just have that own self-reflection. And so in the process of doing that, the question that was posed to me was the question, um, what do you have in your house? And and I'm looking around in my house at this time going, well, I got furniture. I got, you know, <laughs> got clothes in the house. That type of thing, but the question was directed to the ability to what you have the ability to create within your home, and within this book that I've written, the information that was shared with me that ten years, eleven years ago was actually a passage passage of scripture, which many people like myself did not see that storyline in scripture in the in the way in which it unfolded before me that day, and so I knew that that should have really been my first book, Melissa. Because because the the information that was given to me and the way it was given to me from that storyline just reassured me that I was doing the right thing and that other people needed to hear it too, and but for whatever reason I never made that my first book. So one morning I, I don't know maybe a month ago I woke up at about three in the morning three thirty in the morning, and it was time to write. And so within a four hour window I wrote the book and I sent it to my wow. publishing mentor and said I need you to edit it because I got to get this book out. So yeah. Um, wow. So the seven keys to success in business and in life, and the, the subtitle is creating a foundation for wins. Um, cover four keys that I know to be instrumental, and in just creating success. And success is relative, depending on what you do. It's not just for entrepreneurs; it's for people who want to have a successful marriage, you want to have a successful career. There are just certain key keys which I consider to be principles, and principles are universal. So no matter what facet of life you are in, when you apply certain principles, they work for you. It just, it just, it just it's inevitable. And so um, these seven keys have to do with mentorship, the importance of mentorship, the importance of self, uh, personal responsibility, the importance of following, the, trying to recreate the wheel, um, the, the, the importance of perspective. Um, and I, I cover several other keys, but all of these keys were given to me from this passage of scripture, which is basically a story in Second Kings. And when I've had people to read it, Melissa, and review it, they say, I never saw that story in that same light. I said, I never saw that story in that light either until it was given to me. And like I said, it was 11 years ago. I'm excited about it being released because um, I I know what it did for me when it was shared with me 11 years ago. And Mm -hmm. and the consensus of others has been synonymous. Okay. One of the things I was thinking when I was uh, reviewing some of the information that you sent me, one of the things that really jumped out to me, uh, Anissa, was you made a statement right at the beginning, uh, starting is the first step, that the subsequent action is necessary. I just find that to be so true because oftentimes we know, just like you had to see what you were supposed to do, but it couldn't happen until you did it and took the step. So we can sit down and say, God told me this and God told me that, or I want to do this and I want to do that. But until you take an action, you're not able to do that. So to that a little bit, what your thoughts were when you wrote that? Well, here's the thing. A lot of times, and I'm going to speak from an entrepreneur standpoint because I've been engaged in entrepreneurship since 1999, 
we start a business, whatever that business is. Maybe we made a decision to become a caterer, or maybe we made a decision to um, be a part of a direct sales company, or maybe we decided to be an event planner. Whatever the business, it doesn't really matter. We get excited about the thought of it. We get excited mm-hmm. about the concept. We go and we do all the preliminary work necessary. We purchase the business license. Maybe we secure the venue. You know, all the all the mechanics of getting your business started. We get your business cards, Melissa. We get the business cards printed out. We mm-hmm. go get T-shirts made with the company name on it. You know, we do all of that. And then we run into a rut or we run into a brick wall or we run into an obstacle or a challenge, and then we quit. Some people quit. That's part of the process. You know, so when I talk about getting started is only the initial step. There are subsequent subsequent steps that you must take beyond that. Those subsequent steps means overcoming those challenges, you know, getting through mm-hmm. and maneuvering through the um, the myriad of, of things that occur with, within that entrepreneurial journey or within that marital relationship or within that career. And that's why it's important to know the keys and to, to implement these these seven keys or even equip yourself with these seven keys so that you won't just start and stop and start and stop, but you can start, continue the process, and and attain success after success after success, despite what it might look like. Oh, absolutely. So I'm glad you mentioned challenges because my next question was about challenges that you face. Do you feel like you face certain challenges as a female entrepreneur um, because, you know, most of our audience, that's who we are here to inspire and encourage. And I just want them to hear from you is because you're a female writer that that brought some challenges that you wouldn't normally see if you were not. And then how you overcome those challenges. So when those challenges pop up, how do you get through them? Melissa, that's a great question. One of the things I'll say in answering is this. In my journey as a, a um, as an entrepreneur within the industry of direct sales helped prepare me for my journey in the literary area. So when I face challenges now, it doesn't affect me as it would when I, as it may have or maybe the way it did when I first started my entrepreneurial journey in direct sales. So I've had years under my belt and years of maturity and things to get around, so I have my bounce back is a lot quicker. Um, so to answer your question, yes, as a female pursuing um, entrepreneurship in general, I've run into a lot of craziness. I mean, you know, you got the views of people. I say well-intended people in your circle <laughs> who might say things like, you don't need to do that. You have a great job. Why are you doing that? You know, or you need, you're doing too much. Or you're a wife. You know, when do you have time to function on this business and take care of home? You know, no one ever asks a man you know, that type of question. Well, when do you have time for your wife and quality time? You know, they don't do that with men, <laughs> but they ask us immediately. I had even a woman to say to me, um, you know, a, a more mature woman who, who was very well intended. She was I, one I respected, and she said to me, well, how do you travel like that and always away from home? And I said, well, I'm not always away from home. I arrange and you know, I schedule my travel. And you travel on the road by yourself? You know, that type of thing which can plant seeds in your mind if you're not confident and secure in who you are. I think mm-hmm. women face that a little bit more than men do. Um, and then, of course, in some industries that may be more male-dominated, you may have, um, you may be challenged more from that perspective. And then as a woman, period, and who is balancing it all, I don't have children, but I am married. I want to be harmonious in everything that I have responsibility for. So those are the types of things that we go through um, as women. We know we have many hats that we wear. How do we find the balance? So those are the types of challenges I believe that we all face, regardless of our chosen venture or regardless of what we're focusing on. It's just being able to um, find the harmony. As I said before, you've got to find the harmony. And sometimes we don't know how to do that. That's why it's good to have people in our space who have been where we are, uh, want to go, mm-hmm. and have, have, you know, successfully gone through it in a manner in which we can respect with the level of integrity that we, we respect so that they can show us the way because we, we, are, we have to be here for each other. And so we don't have to do it alone, and that's the beautiful thing, and that's why my book was written because I wanted to be able to share what was given to me that made a significant difference in my life so that it can, it, it can serve as an asset to someone else. You know, while you were talking, I was thinking about something else I read, and, 
and the parts of the book that you sent me, and you talk about listening to the right voice. That is so important because I can I can even tell you a situation that happened with me recently. Uh, heard a whole lot of great comments, and then that one comment that was negative, that was the seed that planted in, in my heart and that I kept and I kept going back to and I kept going back to it. So talk to us a little bit about why it's important to listen to the right voice. Well, I believe that everything we allow ourselves to be exposed to has an influence on us. The the things that we allow into the, our various gates. So we have an ear gate an eye gate, and and the mouth is a gate as well. So the things that you see and the things that you hear make an impact on you. Sometimes we we don't even know how much it does until much later. So when I say listen to the right voice, the right voice is not always going to be the same person every time. So if I'm wanting to create success in my marriage, I need to find the right voice for that. That would be the married couple who has years of experience and whose life pattern I desire to to have for myself, you know. So then the advice I get from them is going to be well-seasoned, so to say. But just because they are an excellent couple and they can mentor my husband and I from a marital standpoint does not necessarily mean they are the people I need to speak with when it comes to my business. So then I need to have the right voice from the entrepreneurial standpoint, who is that business person in my community or in or that I can or I can partner with or build a relationship with that will assist me and that person would be the person and I always use the term of the the right person having the right level of integrity. There are people who have been married fifty years, sixty years, but you don't I don't necessarily consider I don't want to mirror my life like theirs. You know, just because they were married sixty years does not mean that's the life the life marriage I want. They may have a business and they be doing well successfully. They may be considered successful, I should say, in the community, but they may not work with the level of integrity that I desire. So when I say the right voice, I mean the voice, same values you do. So that way you don't steer away from or have to compromise anything in the process. So you may have a financial planner, um, someone that can help you with investments. That may not be the person that that helps you with your marriage. You just got to find the right person no matter where you are. I think oftentimes, at least I have, over the years made the mistake and thought that just because this person gave me great advice in this area of my life, they also could give me advice in that area of that life, and that's not always the case. So the right voice can be one person, but it also could be multiple people. And the importance of the the information coming from that voice, because like I shared, that, that person is great that said that to me, Someone I respect highly in so many other areas, but when I got that negative feedback that I held on for months before I even realized I was holding on to it, talking to him about that situation was probably not what was best. So I definitely agree that it's listening to the right voice because it impacts everything after that. It impacts how you look at it, how you function. So I definitely agree with that. So, uh, and then our audience is filled with women, and some of these women uh, have a desire to write a book. What advice would you give to them? I would advise them to just start writing. I would just sit down and write. Don't worry about perfection right now. Just get the content on paper. And as you do, that's the process, that's the start. You'll eventually, you know, you may make changes along the way. I had a conversation with a young lady who said she had been trying to write a book now for almost a year. And as she was going, she was editing and changing and editing and changing different aspects of it. She says, I just can't seem to get finished because I keep making changes. And so I advised her, I said, stop, stop editing, just write. Get to, a, get to a stop, get to a completion point, and then get someone else to look work with you on the editing process. If they want to self-publish, that's a perfectly great option. I would say, however, to find a great editor of of the book, even if you choose to self-publish. And editing is more than just making sure that all the words are spelled properly. It's more to editing than that. Um, But but find someone um, that can assist you with that. It's more than just the the spelling and punctuation. Great editing includes more than it has to do with clarity and conciseness, all of that. 
find someone that can assist you with the process, whether you choose to go um, the self-published route or even like with the publishing company that I partner with, we are a hybrid. So we're not the traditional publishing, we're not the self-publishing, but we do work with authors um, to assist them with the editing and the formatting so that all of the um, little intricacies of the the finished product are in place that many who are trying to self-publish may not be aware of. But, you know, for the most important part, though, is just to start. Stop thinking about it. Stop wondering if you should and just put pen to paper and let it flow. Wow, that's excellent advice. I want to thank you again for joining us today, and congratulations on your book coming out soon, Seven Keys to Success. Let our audience know how they can stay connected with you. Well, thank you again, Melissa, for allowing me to be on. I was so excited to get your email, so I don't take that lightly. Um, But to find more about me and to stay connected with me, you can go to my link tree. um, I guess my link tree, connect with me through link tree. So that's going to be link, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Dr. Anissa Short. And that is spelled A-N-I-S-S-A, short as a not very tall. That's the best place. And they can find many of my books on Amazon as well under my name, Anissa Short. Awesome. Thank you again, Anissa, for being here today. And thank you to our audience for tuning in to today's edition of Dream by Design. I'm your host, Melissa Banks, saying all your dreams are possible. Believe in yourself, work hard, and don't quit. Until next time, thank you for choosing Dream by Design with Melissa Banks. Enjoy your day.